there. It just keeps wow. going, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. That one's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, come around this side? Yeah. Okay. Come down it. I just wanted to keep you quite tight here, Ben. Roger. Because it seems, seems all right. All the pace inside, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just got such dark areas and such bright areas that I think that'll probably work both best for his purpose. Speed to low unless he has another idea. The resolution to low. Yeah. Seems too close. Yeah, I'm two meters right now. Is that on the digital stills camera or on the main camera? On the main camera, not on the DSC. And the DSC is on Nautilus uh, satellite feed three. If he wants to see the GUI or the tether, I think I should call it five meters to work. Another quick science question. Will these keep growing up forever or will they eventually collapse? Yeah, it just depends if the heat source continues or not. The plumes are still active and the chimneys are still uh, active, then they're going to keep causing uh, growth. But if the heat source oh. turns off for a bit or cools down, we never lost it, um, then a chimney can become inactive and eventually it can erode and crumble. Yeah, it's, it's all about the heat source. Thank you, May. Thanks, May. Yeah, well done. Sometimes a heat source moves around, so you'll have one chimney that's really active for many years and then turns off, and another one sort of comes up nearby, and then it starts to grow another chimney. But So when the heat source turns off is when the erosion starts? We could move well, here it's, if you it's want. Well, it's slowly back, right? kind of crumbling all the time. Right. Um, there's a lot of biological growth on these power. chimneys. So you can see they're covered in little tube worms and, and other stuff, but... Those two worms are attracted to the chimney because of the fluids. So if a chimney is no longer uh, emitting fluids or um, emits more diffuse fluid and there's less animals that are interested in living there, then eventually it'll kind of crumble, but can get knocked over or... Um, so does well. all of that biology, like the two worms and everything else, is that kind of what helps to maintain the structure? Um, it's, it's, it, it can help to some degree, but it can also cause the structure to kind of have, uh, more growth in some area and maybe mm -hmm. it'll be like less stable in, in some part, but it also just depends on the types of chemicals that are coming out of the, the chimney, um, and what's being emitted, which will sort of dictate how crumbly the structure is, the material of the chimney itself. Side of this thing yet? I don't think so. Uh, I don't. Well, I just go here, for it. Yeah, we did go for it, but I'm just watch your, watch your butt. Yeah, I'm not gonna go down anymore. Yeah, I'm okay, good. Well, Endeavor uh, is one of the many. Uh, deep sea sites that we monitor with the Neptune Observatory. Right. So we have this 800-kilometer uh, loop uh, observatory, and we monitor quite a few uh, ecosystems in the Northeast Pacific. Endeavor is very peculiar because um, we have a spreading center there. We have the Juan de Fuca uh, bridge, and so we have a hydrothermal activity uh, happening on the seafloor. And those ecosystems, uh, and the biology, and then geology, and even physical oceanography has been uh, studied at this site for a few decades. And with the presence of the observatory here, we are able to monitor in near real time for many of the parameters uh, of seismic and the biology. And 
So we come here every year to continue to study this, this environment. And we have, as you guys probably seen, we've been um, maintaining and bringing back, bringing back to the seafloor new instruments and maintain and bringing to the surface the older instruments that we need to need to be surface. Great T-handle grab there, nailed it. And yeah, the, the, this is a peculiar site where the observatory was installed because we are in a very tiny uh, tectonic plate, uh, the Juan de Fuca plate. So essentially we have uh, spreading happening at the Juan de Fuca Ridge and we also have subduction at the Cascadia margin. So we have, for example, methane seeps occurring at the, we, we've been to Clyquid Slope and not Barclay Canyon yet, but we are going to be visiting by the end of the expedition. It's so cute. <laughs> he's centering himself up for me too. Yeah, he's really not shy. <laughs> Look what I can do. Sorry. Try to get the the right through a plume right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. 